Is there a line from the show? Like a, a funny, like, I'll buy that for a dollar? Or... From The Walking Dead? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> nice uh, Running Man reference, though. <laughs> Solid. Uh, look out for that zombie. <laughs> look out for that zombie. Yeah, I, I think they probably say that at some point in there, right? It's... Yeah. Zombie-ish. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today we're looking out for zombies and drinking bourbon. All right, Ben. We've got a... That was my uh, my attempt at throwing it over to you. Okay. Well, we have today on the bar, bam. This is the uh, Walking Dead Spirits of the Apocalypse, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, I don't know if there is a whole lot of information about this out there. It's obviously a gimmick whiskey that's, you know, made for the, you know, it's kind of like the TV show version of like a celebrity whiskey. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so there's a tie-in to a TV show, which I've never yeah. seen, by the way, so. Which is weird because there's not really an ongoing whiskey theme in The Walking Dead, so I'm not sure why they just decided to make a bourbon, but they did, and here it is. Is there a whiskey theme in the Metallica universe? Oh yeah, I bet yeah. there is. Yeah, there's probably a lot of whiskey that gets drank in the Metallica universe. Metallica also has a, a whiskey out, and there's a bunch of bands, dude. We gotta do a battle of the bands. Yeah, we should. Uh, flight some night, but this, is the, uh, I don't know, Apocalypse Survival bottle of whiskey. Batch one. Um, all I've heard about this is that it's high rye, yep. sourced. Yep. Possibly sourced by Four Roses. Because we think it's from Kentucky, because it says something about Kentucky on the bottle. Sure. So this one runs about 30 to $35 around here, which, I don't know, that seems a little expensive for a, have does, no idea what it is, like. Do zombies run that fast? No. I, well, it, it depends on which. like stiff-legged and. Which zombie well, yeah. universe you're watching. Either way. <laughs> so this one, it's always been, a, for a bottle that's obviously just a gimmick bottle, mm -hmm. and it has no information on where it comes from, you don't really have high expectations for it. So 30 bucks, We're thinking this 35. is like a two year and a day kind of thing? I don't know, to be honest. Well, so continuing on that, so. This has always been a little more expensive. There was a liquor store, the one over in Delano had it for like 15 bucks one time. Oh. And I didn't buy it, and then ever since then I've been seeing it for like 30, 35, I was like, I should have just bought that to try it for 15 bucks. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Then I was at Total Wine the other day, and they had it on sale for 15 bucks, so I bought it. And in the since all that, or in the time from when I saw it for that cheap before, and bought it, I actually saw there was a bar that randomly had a bottle of this, which isn't really the type of bourbon you would think you would see on a bar shelf, but... But it's kind of thing people connect with the title and... Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think the guy had said they got it for... I can't remember. He There's a story behind it. Anyway, I had a pour of it that night at the bar, and I enjoyed it. I really liked it, actually. So I'm kind of interested. It sure. wasn't my first drink that night, you know, so you know, whatever you had before that could yep. influence it, but... Yep. Let's just see if so it now holds here up. we are in the laboratory, you know, clinical yeah. environment. Yes, of the exactly. Bar. Where science happens. Yeah, for science. All right, here we go. Definitely has a nice high rye nose to it. Yep, high rye. I, it's like a bright corn kind of note where... Yeah, I can I, see that. I think it's going to be sweet, but also young, is my guess based on, you know, just initial perspective. It'd be a nice balance of sweet and spicy. Yeah. Because I'm getting that on the nose, like this corn sweetness, but then the rye... Spice. All right, let's give it a, a whirl else. here. Go for it. Not you, bad. Do you want to go first? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Definitely a lot of rye on the palate, but there's a there's a lot of corn underneath it. Like I'm getting that corn, that kind of dusty corn note that we talk about. But up front, it's a little more rye, and I got the corn on the finish a little bit more. Even some like vanillas and stuff. Yeah. 
What about, what did you get? Um, really, really light. Like I was, I don't know. I'm guessing it's 80 proof, right? I haven't looked. Oh but... yeah, we didn't even think the proof. It is 94. Hmm. Oh wait. I can't read this because there's like a bloody fingerprint on the bottle over it. Oh no, it's a, uh, is it say 47%? Maybe it's 47%. I don't know, I'll figure out and put it on the screen. It's very tough to read because in the bottle has like uh, these little I, I'm gonna do another pour because I, I just like, I, like it, hit, it just hit me wrong. Like I'm not sure what my thoughts are. Like I, I guess I had certain expectations and Yeah, I'm still getting all rye up front. It's not the most bold, but it has that sharp sweet or sharp rye spice to it. I would think that being as much of a fan of Four Roses as you are, that you would maybe like this and compare it to like a the base model Four Roses, formal yellow label, now beige label. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what was up with that. That first sip, that first pour was kind of interesting. Yeah. Is it changing as you sip it? Yeah, a little so further? I'm getting a lot more. It's almost like, and maybe this is my fault, I had a little bit of water left in it. Does it really came across as watery? Oh, okay. And I wonder if from maybe, rinsing out the yeah, glass. Rinsing out the glass, it was a little like it was noticeably underwhelming. And almost so much so that I thought there's something wrong. But it's much better. Definitely rye forward. Mm-hmm. There's that vanilla corn a bit of cinnamon on the back end of it i think if you like high rye bourbons this is pretty good and i would imagine this is sourced from some place that sure is a high rye mash bill kind of yeah shop. that's probably a, a fairly common distillery i'm actually getting a cornbread note on the finish yeah to be perfectly honest, what I'm when I'm saying the dusty corn and the vanilla and the cinnamon, yeah. it's reminding me a bit of mellow corn on the finish. Yeah, it's very. I hate to use this term because it's, you know, your favorite word, but corny. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, it has a very corn, and I don't know. We just recently celebrated a holiday with a bunch of corn themed meals. Mm -hmm. And one in particular, a cornbread, special cornbread with a bunch of additives. Um, really getting that kind of corn yeah. kind of note. It definitely has that on the back. Like I said, it's cornbread. and it hasn't changed with every sip. It's just yeah. stayed consistent. It's all rye up front. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, a, like I said, the, the, the finish of it really reminds me of mellow corn. Yeah, I would agree. But there's some sweetness, a little bit. Your <laughs> mellow corn, the whiskey. Yeah. There's some cinnamon. But it's light, vanilla, kind of cornbread. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is pretty good actually. It's like I said, I think I would imagine it's probably from a distillery that we all know, and yep. I, I don't know exactly which one, but sure. It doesn't come across as like a like a, a whiskey that wasn't ready to go in the bottle yet, mm -mm. you know. And that's why I think you know you source something you can easily source yeah. a four-year bourbon yeah it doesn't come across as like a craft one where they'll start putting it out at two years and it's just not quite ready yeah i'm not getting that at all no nope. so it's not just like a falls flat gimmicky whiskey i would imagine yeah i mean i just i think this is actually pretty good the only thing i <clears throat> would say is maybe it's a tad watered down mm-hmm in Maybe a tad too watered down, but that's just me. It's got a nice spice and a nice bite to it, followed up with some really good sweetness. Yeah. Um, at $35, yeah. you know. Less than 20, I think, yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. When you start getting at the 30, 35, then it kind of like, okay, you know. I mean, if you want to have a Walking Dead party and. Oh, sure. Then. You know, if you're a fan of the show, which I am, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to just have this for the yeah, totally the, the fun of the doing nostalgia. it, yeah. it's you're paying a little bit more maybe than you probably need to. But the point is that it's still a good whiskey. Yeah. You know, it's not something that you get the bottle and it looks cool because it says Walking Dead mm -hmm. and then the whiskey is just trash. Right. This is actually good. It does taste good. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, I'm perfectly fine having this on the shelf. So this would be a good go-to one. 
Sometimes I, I'm not typically the most high rye forward bourbon drinker. I like a really good sweet bourbon. But then every once in a while, I really do like to just kind of change lanes yeah. and just get like a good, nice rye punch to the face. And this is going to be really good for doing that. I agree. So, yeah, I would say 20-ish or below. Definitely pick one up. Yep. Once you, like I said, get to 30, 35, then I guess you just decide how much you want it on your shelf. Exactly. You have to be a fan of the show. So, all right. Well, this has been Spirits of the Apocalypse on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Cheers. Do you think they have vampire whiskey? Uh, I don't know. Oh, we should look. I th there should be vampire whiskey. There should be vampire hunter whiskey.